Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host, to um, with Dr. Jack August, a PhD, <laughs> and he is our state historian, and he is the author of many books. And we've already done an episode on the Capitol Museum, uh -huh. and if, um, we're inviting people to come down to the Arizona State Capitol and. Yes. You're going to be expanding the expanding services. You're going to build a coffee shop, add to your books and mm -hmm. and your other things that but, you will have for sale. You're going to bring in rural Arizona wines, and at least you're working on that. Working You'll on learn it, yeah. learn about that in November for sure. Yes, we will. As to whether it's approved, yes. But just inviting people down to the Capitol as the state historian. You work for uh, Secretary of State Michelle Reagan. Yes. And I want to share a little bit of information about you. I'm just so proud to know you. <laughs> and I've known you for many years, and I just have enjoyed. Uh, you just amaze me, because you just have so many dates and facts and figures in that head of yours. <laughs> <laughs> and I've written many mm. books that you also have. Um, you represent different water interests, and you yes. testify in court on water issues. Yes. But you are. Um, the historian for the Arizona State Library, Archives and Public Records through the Office of the Secretary of State. Yes. You're a scholar in residence at the Southwest Center for History and Public Policy, an Arizona nonprofit think tank, and you're the former Fulbright, you are a former Fulbright Scholar, National Endowment for the Humanities Research Fellow, winner of the Border Regional Library Association Southwest Book Award for Literacy Excellence and Pulitzer Prize nominee in the history category. And I think you'll win one someday, I predict. Well, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> You're the author of numerous books on the history of the New American West and you've taught at the University of His Houston, University of Northern British Columbia, and Northern Arizona University, among others, mm -hmm. where your courses are focused on the American West and environmental history. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about the books that you have okay. authored. And um, I bought Vision in the Desert. I've always worked on water issues in the yes. Verde Valley and I love that book. Um, it's about Carl Hayden and hydropolitics in the American Southwest. And I just really admire Carl Hayden. And you know, some people talk about Senator McCain's age, and I tell them that's nothing. That's nothing. If you think about Carl Hayden and how long he served and what he did for the United States and what he did for Arizona and the, um, the CAP, Central Arizona Project, is something that he worked on for years and oh. years. He was good. He, he was a Democrat. Yeah. But he worked across the aisle with others, which was the only way we really got that Central Arizona project. That's, that's correct. And you have another book that you wrote that talks about how we, um, it's called The D Dealing Western Waters, Dividing or Western Dividing Water. Western Waters. And you talk about Ma Mark Woolmer in that book. And he was an Arizona lawyer who was credited with winning the Supreme Court case of Arizona versus California, but we'll get to yeah, that. We'll get let's go back and talk about Carl Hayden. Yeah, let's walk through his, <laughs> his uh, lengthy career. It's really pretty remarkable. He's uh, born on the south bank of the Salt River in, in Hayden's Ferry, the town, uh, the little outpost uh, uh, that his father founded, uh, and he's born in 1877, um, and October 2nd, by the way. And All right, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> and uh, and so he grows up uh, in an, uh, a rather uh, austere desert environment uh, where the vicissitudes of flood and drought. Uh, uh, there's a flood event in 1891 that uh, ruined everyone. There's another one in 1905, the other big regional flood that created the Salton Sea, and among this other was, things. Was this, this, is, this in Phoenix? In or? Phenix. Well, okay. it was, that was regional. It was the Colorado River system. Because so the that salt, the Gila, right. everything flo flooded in 1905. The Verde. The Verde, everything. <laughs> it, it, all, the, uh, almost every locality in Arizona was affected or impacted by that great flood, which was, which was weeks. Uh, 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 but uh, So he grows up in this environment, and uh, uh, he, goes to, he goes to Arizona Territorial Normal School. Then he goes to Stanford. Uh, Arizona Territorial Normal School is more like a high school than a college of mm -hmm. AS, that ASU is today. And he goes to Stanford, and he's uh, classmates with Herbert Hoover and, 
ultimately Carl Hayden's wife is uh, Herbert Hoover's wife's best friend at Stanford. Uh, Nan Downing Hayden is her name. And so he goes to Stanford and almost is going to graduate. He's going to get ready to play in the first Rose Bowl game. Uh, he was the center on Stanford's football team. And uh, Stanford lost to Michigan 51 to nothing, by the way. And, uh, uh, but his dad dies on February 7th of 1900. And so he has to leave Stanford and return to Hayden's Ferry. Uh, and while he was at Stanford, he uh, wanted to make water law his specialty because through it he could do some good for his people in Arizona. So he comes back as a young man. He's supposed to take over the Hayden family business, but uh, says, no, I'm going to go and do a life of public service like you. Uh, you spent many years of your life in mm -hmm. public service. He becomes uh, first uh, uh, a county treasurer. Uh, he's a Tempe city councilman. Then he becomes county he was treasurer. He sheriff, wasn't he? Yeah, 1904 <laughs> to 1906, he's county treasurer, and he paid people with gold coins. And then... From 1907 to 1912, he's Maricopa County Sheriff. He was Joe Arpaio's predecessor, wow. except he never <laughs> fired a gun. Uh, he didn't like to go to hangings. Uh, uh, when he would go to take a prisoner down to Yuma, a territorial prison, he had to say fresh fish. That was the password. He'd get up the hill uh, to turn the prisoner over. Uh, but through that job as Maricopa County uh, Sheriff, it was he got paid by the mile. And oh. so it was a it was a very desired job. But right. he was a, uh, the Democrat. Uh, uh, Democrats were in control of the state at the time, and uh, through that he met a lot of people throughout the state. He decides to run for uh, our first congressman at large when it was obvious we were going to become a state. So we had a special election in 1911, and he becomes our first congressman. And he serves 1911. From, and imagine and, and that. 1912. <laughs> so he goes in under William Howard Taft, mm -hmm. and his. If you look at the end of his career, when he retires in 69, he retires under Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's ten presidents at least. Wow. And uh, through his career, he uh, made water legislation his uh, his priority, and to fight California, which never wanted to see water diverted from the Colorado into Arizona. Into Arizona. Oh, that, that you couldn't get elected in California if you were for what was then the Central Arizona Project. Mm -hmm. Now, the concept of the Central Arizona Project, very briefly, uh, really starts in the 1890s with people up in Kingman that say, maybe if we can build a ditch from here uh, we, and to get to Central Arizona, that would be a great thing. So conceptually, it's an idea from the 1890s. and uh, uh, But it becomes a real project in the, the 1940s during the war uh, when Hayden and other people were thinking, what are we going to do when these guys come back from the war? They need jobs. And so infrastructure. Uh, and uh, so uh, it was, yes, large federal spending policies. But Arizona would not have had uh, the highways, the waterworks, uh, and the power development to fuel growth and development for this, uh, uh, for what we've benefited from in the second half of the 20th century and into the 21st. We have a pretty dynamic economy, and a lot of it is, has to do with the acquisition of water and power. And Absolutely. Carl Hayden. So it's kind of unsexy stuff, but necessary. And Carl Hayden was uh, Arizona's le legislative water master, and he deserves a lot of credit. Absolutely. He also um, worked with the... Um, I, I, I just drew a blank... <laughs> well, I mean, it's all right. Well, let's see. He worked. Uh, he worked across party lines. He, he did. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, he he voted. He 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 wrote the bill in the House of Representatives for, for the women's right to vote. Oh, 1918, great. Okay. Uh, 1918, 1919. So uh, then he, he always served thought, up until 19. Oh yeah, we were talking about McCain. He served until 1969, and in fact, in the election of 1962, his last Senate term. It's kind of like uh, he was 84. John McCain is 80. Mm -hmm. uh, he was 84 years old in his last term, and uh, uh, the Republican nominee was, guess who, Evan Meekham. Oh. Uh, uh, he, he pulled an upset of Barry Goldwater's mm -hmm. friend, uh, Congressman Shadegg's father. Mm -hmm. They thought that, uh, that Stephen Shadegg was going to be uh, the nominee, so Meekham is an insurgent, 38-year-old with a crew cut, and uh, they were worried about it. And in fact, Barry Goldwater, the junior senator from Arizona, raised fifty thousand dollars from Republicans and was and Meekham thought he was going to get that money. He turned around and gave it to Hayden. And two days before the election, Barry Goldwater endorses Carl Hayden in the Arizona <laughs> Republic, uh, and much to uh, 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 Meekham's chagrin, but he thought it was so darn important because of Hayden's position in the Appropriations Committee and the soon to be 
rendered uh, Arizona versus California Supreme Court case over the Colorado River system, which Arizona is going to win. And so we needed Carl Hayden in office with his senior position to get uh, the, the bill through. And it took 63 to 69 to the end, his last term, get, getting that, get that bill done. through. And it was hard. And right. there was opposition from his own party. From his own party. Uh, it was the Udalls that I was thinking the, the of Udalls that too. were part of all of that. Yeah, the Udalls yeah. were there too. And one was in the Department of Interior position and with the Kennedy administration and Johnson. And Mo was in a real tough position in, in Hayden's office. And the Udalls didn't get along for a while. Uh, ultimately, they come together in the mm -hmm. end. But there was a lot of maneuvering and jockeying, just uh, as you might know. And it's not just party against party. It's within the party right. uh, sometimes. Oh, and, yes. And, <laughs> and, that, and Vision in the Desert goes, uh, th that book on Hayden goes mm -hmm. th through that, too. So it's uh, for the political junkies and the guys that like the inside baseball, that's a, that's a good book to look at. And it's a good uh, prism to look at Arizona's growth and development in the 20th century. And having grown up in Arizona in the 60s, I remember all of these names, oh, wow. the Udalls and, you know, yeah. Carl Hayden, and so it always strikes. And Sam Steiger was a congressman, and Hayden used to, the Arizona congressional delegation would meet in Hayden's office in the 60s, and Hayden would say, where's that Prescott boy? Because uh, Sam Steiger was from Prescott, and he called him a, where's that Prescott kid or that Prescott boy? Get him over here. And, right. and we all worked together, Republicans and Democrats, particularly over water uh, legislation. Absolutely, we had to. We had to. So it's time for another, a break, okay. and we will be right back with Inside Cottonwood. Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. Because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. Mayor Diane Jones, your host, with Dr. Jack August, an author and the state historian. So we're talking a little bit about some of your books, and you've written a number of books. Yeah. Um, Carl Hayden book is my favorite, okay. but <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I love that one. Just love Carl Hayden and the history of, of yeah. the water of Arizona. But you wrote a book about Dennis DeConcini. Yeah, and that one, surprisingly enough, won the Southwest Book Award for Literary Excellence and Cultural Enrichment of the Southwest. It's a it's an international award uh, uh, with the border provinces of Mexico and the border states, uh, Texas, Arizona, and Mexico. So it's a big regional uh, uh, award. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proud to have received it. But uh, Dennis uh, was uh, a U.S. senator from uh, 1976. He wins uh, the election. Uh, he runs against, in fact, Sam Steiger, who we mentioned last segment. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it serves until 95, and his vote on the Panama Canal and his key vote in the 1993 tax bill, which was uh, the, the Clinton tax uh, policy, uh, were, were crucial. But he was a very effective senator. He was a Tucson, a rare Tucson senator that won a statewide election and, uh, and served uh, admirably. And uh, as the, the subtitle is Senator Dennis, you can see the subtitle is From the Center of the Aisle. And that mm -hmm. kind of gets where he was. He and Orrin Hatch worked really well together. Uh, and it, again, it's a book about not only his life and career, but uh, the, the history of bipartisanship. We used to be able to work across the aisle. He may have been the last guy. Uh, and he was a Republican. He was a Democrat in an increasingly Republican state. And uh, kind of, uh, he was an outlier, I think, as Janet Napolitano was as well, mm -hmm. just somehow. Uh, and she's further to the left politically than, than Dennis. Dennis mm -hmm. has had, had a lot of, I said, you're the most Republican Democrat, Dennis, I've ever met. <laughs> and so he laughs, but it's true. Uh, right. Yeah, so that, that book is, has done well. Uh, Dividing Western Waters is uh, a history, it's a legal history of Arizona versus California, the longest Supreme Court case, I think, in American history. 
11 years, starting in 52, when we finally couldn't get out of Congress to get some kind of bill for Arizona. We needed to define who got what from the Colorado River system. Uh, Arizona basically won the case. California, much to their chagrin, they thought they were going to roll us, but uh, Governor McFarland at the time made a change in the uh, legal team in the middle of the case. And incredibly, he got to, he, Mark Wilmer of the, the law firm of Snell and Wilmer changed uh, the legal uh, theory of the case, and Arizona won the case, which paved the way for uh, legislation uh, creating the Central Arizona Project. So that book's used in quite a few law schools, and I'm, I'm happy about that. Right, yeah, right. Thanks. That's a great book. And Adversity is My Angel, yes. The Life and Career of Raul Castro. Governor Raul Castro. And he, um, he you know, it chronicles, your book chronicles uh, how he overcame personal and racial prejudice to rise to the highest levels of accomplishment and and uh, he just recently passed away. Yes. I thought he was going to make 100. He, he died at uh, I think age 98, almost 99. And he lived in Nogales in his later years, yes, he but did. he was the governor and and midstream of being governor, he was appointed by the president to be um, ambassador, filming, a, a, ambassador, ambassador to Argentina. Okay. That was his third post. He mm -hmm. uh, I can say uh, I'm very happy to say that Diversity is My Angel has been uh, optioned to be uh, uh, by a filmmaker in, uh, in Hollywood. I and, read uh, about that. Yeah, and uh, it's exciting. It's, they're uh, looking Jackie for Jackie Zabel, Jackie, Stellar Jackie, Productions. Uh, Stellar Productions, mm -hmm. yes, Jackie Zabel. And they've done quite a, uh, they were responsible for uh, Fife Symington's uh, uh, favorite t TV show in the 90s, uh, Dark Skies. Mm -hmm. So they've, uh, they're have they veteran Hollywood people, and I'm happy about that. But Governor Castro, Briefly, was born in Mexico. That became an American citizen at age 23 when he graduated from what is now NAU in 1938, 39, uh, and then uh, bounced around. Uh, was homeless. He says, "I was a hobo for a while." Oh, I remember the story yeah. about he, he hid in the garbage. Yeah, hid in the garbage. He got off the the train and hid in the garbage because they were looking for hobos. Hobos. Yeah, and he couldn't. He, he never would have been able to go to law school or, or get a license had he been arrested. So he gets through law school at the U of A in two years instead of three, teaches Spanish Just at the same time. Just a smart guy. Very smart guy. And, yeah. and even in his 90s, I have to tell you, a good legal mind. Mm -hmm. Still a good Sharp uh, attorney. Attack, huh? uh, he was ambassador to El Salvador, Bolivia, and he was ambassador when Che Guevara was killed in Bolivia. Uh, then he comes back, loses the first time when he runs for governor, and then wins the second time. And he serves until he's appointed ambassador to Argentina, which is a very dangerous post. So a fascinating guy. Another book, uh, uh, play by play. play, by play. Uh, it's a it's, it's a history of the Herberger Theater, and that is a symbol of the Renaissance, the beginning of the Renaissance of downtown Phoenix. Downtown Phoenix is now a place to go. Before the Herberger Theater came together, you got out of there at five o'clock. You didn't want to be in downtown no. Phoenix. It, it wasn't a safe place to be. No, and uh, and now it's just totally a Renaissance, as you say, and it's the just, law schools down there, I the mean, medical centers, uh, the yeah, bioscience transit campus. Transit is there, and it's, so that really built it up, I think. Yeah, this is the transit. Yeah, you know, this is kind of an urban and cultural history, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I really enjoyed doing that. It's a little outside of my area. Uh, of uh, kind of uh, legal and political history, but I enjoyed doing that book. That's fantastic. And then we call it Prescott. Prescott. Yeah, it's an Arizona Highways book. I, they, uh, I don't know how we came together to do that. It was a fun book. It's uh, They had a soft cover series back in the day in the 90s, and uh, I did it. And it's one of the reasons I ended up uh, moving to Prescott in a way uh, and uh, had a good time doing it. I worked with the city council and the mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked out a deal with uh, their, that distinguished publication and uh, it was a little lighter fare than I'm used to doing, but it, I, it, I proved myself I could do it. Mm -hmm, uh, that you do something could do a little something lighter. short, yeah, right. short, and, short and, and sweet. Yeah. Huh? So that sounds like a fun book too. Um, so those that, are some of the books. How could someone look for your books, and how well, could they purchase your well, books? Well, that one, uh, the uh, well, there's one other one I want to mention. John Norton just passed away. The Norton oh, trilogy yes. I did is a big, the uh, trilogy. a major uh, Republican player. He was deputy secretary of agriculture, mm -hmm. the John the Third. The in Norton the, Trilogy. Yeah, in the, the uh, Reagan administration, but his grandfather was the foreman uh, bit, bit that dug the Arizona Canal in 1884, the first big game changer uh, to bring water uh, to the, uh, the, the greater Phoenix area and created that agricultural empire. So 
It's a history of water and big agriculture through three generations of John Norton's, and that was a real pleasure to do, and it's uh, selling really rather well. It's Great. my most recent book. Your most recent. Yes. And, and so they can purchase those on Amazon.com. Amazon, of course. And or they can go to the Capitol Library. Yeah, the Capitol Museum. And, the and Capitol Museum. They'll be, yeah, I think they'll be uh, available very soon. I, I waited until other books got in. And, right, you know, you right. Know, when you're a university professor, you don't assign your books. You shouldn't assign your books, I should say, to... Uh, to uh, your classes, uh, but uh, in this instance, I think uh, since it speaks to the subject matter, uh, they'll be available for sale at the Capitol Museum, and heck, I'll sign them if you can All chase right, me if down. You, if you come in. <laughs> so we're going to take another quick break, and when, okay. we, when we come back, we're going to talk about the book you're working on right now, yeah. how you found all these documents, and that's about Fife Symington. Yes, it is. So we will be right back. And we'll take a break now. Good. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Atta boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane, your, Diane Jones, your host with Dr. Jack August, state historian and author. So I'm very excited. We've already talked about this several times when yeah. you've been to Cottonwood to visit our old town. And you're working on a book um, about uh, Governor Fife Symington. Yes. And it's just, it sounds so exciting when we've talked about it, but... You were like writing this book and you were like, where are the records, where are the records? Yes. And so how did you get yeah. these records? Well, it became a big news story, uh, kind of almost front page on a lot of uh, Arizona stories, but uh, Arizona newspapers and uh, the media, but um, uh, people remember when Governor Symington had to leave office uh, due to his uh, indictment in 1997. He was governor from 1991 to 1997, elected twice, and uh, because of the uh, trial, he had, had his records, and they went away mm -hmm. for 20 years. And so uh, as we started the book, uh, and I started the research and interviewing people and doing the secondary, what's called secondary research, secondary source research, and primary source research, I said, Fife, you know, I've got to write an informed narrative on your, your gubernatorial years, and I need to see the memos and all this stuff. So, uh, and I, you know, I said, you know, President Clinton pardoned you, and uh, it's over. You don't need to, you know, the, the, the lawyers mm -hmm. are gone. Uh, uh, your case took these wild uh, turns and uh, uh, t to the time of your uh, uh, petition for pardon and uh, President Clinton's presidential uh, pardon for you. So, uh, finally, we went to a storage unit at on Thomas uh and 3rd Avenue in Phoenix. We had to get some bolt cutters, and boom, and Fife and I went in there. We fell on top of each other. It's really hard <laughs> to do it, and, and we were like, we'd go crashing to the floor. And the governor and I will go in there, and, and there it is, and he was, a, it was like a, uh, it was like going back in time for him, and it was very emotional for him, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and all his files, uh, photographs, uh, uh, memorabilia, uh, but most importantly, the, the stuff that documents it. And uh, I, we convinced him that he should be take his place among all the other governors and have his papers available for uh, as he as they should for for the public and for mm -hmm. future researchers uh, there'll be dissertations there'll mm -hmm. be master's theses there'll be journalists doing work uh, on what happened in Arizona from say, the, the the 1990s and so it serves a, a variety of purposes not only my purpose um, 
But the public's but, but, purpose. But for the public's purpose. Right. It's really something, and his case is unique. It's being taught in law schools because uh, of the, the, the judge removing a, a, a juror. Mm -hmm. That's very controversial, and uh, it set up certain precedents. So for, for legal scholars, political scientists, historians, and others, uh, it's, it's a real treasure trove. Also, um, in this process of research, Fife called me one day from Santa Barbara. He says, I just, op I just found a trunk, my mother's trunk. Her, his mother's name was Martha Howard Frick. She was the granddaughter of Henry Clay Frick, who, with, along with Andrew Carnegie, uh, U.S. Steel, railroads, the Industrial Revolution, mm -hmm. you can say robber barons, but he was mm -hmm. one of the wealthiest men in the country, if not the world. And so his great-grandfather and the Frick Museum in, his, in New York, one of the great art museums, mm -hmm. Well, Fife is a, a Frick. related to all of those. Yes, and you know what? And, and the letters are uh, Charles Frick, his grandfather, uh, and his mother. We found all of the personal correspondence, and so they're going to be part of this collection. So it is a very rich, uh, uh, robust, I've uh, maybe overused that word today, but uh, collection. And, uh, and it's just it's so exciting. And you said it's going to be a long book. It's going to be a long book. I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm now in the writing phase, and it's always good to get to that phase. Every book is different. It's like building a different house all the right, time. Right, right. And uh, I'd say this is probably going to be around a 600-page manuscript because his story uh, and some of his uh, life events have been so unique. I mean, it, uh, there's no one like him. I can also tell you he's a happy guy. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that's come to terms with what, what happened. What happened for, in for, life. What happened in life. Mm -hmm. Someone, he was in Santa Barbara recently at the dinner, and the, the, there was a table next to him, and it happened to be uh, Al Gore's daughter and her husband. And they said, well, you know, they started talking. They kind of recognized him. And they said, well, what do you do? He says, well, I was a developer, I was a governor, and now I'm a chef. I, I, I was reading yeah. that he was a chef now. Yeah, and he's a really good one. He, man, he's cooked for me, and he's, yeah, he owns a couple of restaurants. He's in mm -hmm. the restaurant industry. He enjoys it. Um, but he uh, reinvented his, uh, his uh, life and career. Uh, and... Uh, uh, he went to Harvard from 1964 to 68, for example, um, uh, where he really kind of reaffirmed his conservative uh, political genes, and he fell under the sway of an economist named uh, F. A. Hayek, H. A. Y. A. K. He had won the Nobel Prize in uh, in economics. Uh, 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 Margaret Thatcher was a devotee of her uh, of Hayek's uh, economic theories, and that's as I, I think we were saying before the show. That's why he uh, he was kind of uh, that's the only area of kind of inflexibility, or he's doctrinaire a little bit over mm -hmm. economic theory. But that's mm -hmm. fine. He's a really flexible guy. He's a much more moderate. Uh, I think people back in the day thought he was a really overly maybe very conservative governor. Today, I kind of kid him. I said, I don't think he could win a Republican primary today. <laughs> five, and he laughs. Uh, and, and, with, uh, and he's also a brilliant guy, yeah. a great student at, at Harvard. Uh, he studied art history uh, and uh, did a lot of his work at the Frick Museum, some of his papers on some of the paintings mm -hmm. that his, his great-grandfather had collected. Um, an interesting uh, period in the 80s where he's the chairman of the uh, for fundraising for the Republican Party. He gets involved in politics. He's involved in getting rid of uh, Evan Meekham, uh, the impeachment. Uh, to, he thought Governor Meekham was uh, hurting the party. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he runs for governor and, and, and wins. Now, a couple of fun facts about it. When Fife was a kid, growing up uh, in Lutherville, Maryland, his best friend in school was John Waters, the filmmaker who did Hairspray, mm -hmm. Fink, Pink Flamingos, Mondo Trasho, okay. uh, Desperate Living, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Cry Baby, uh, Cecil B. Demented. I mean, he was a, an avant-garde filmmaker and uh, who cut a, a unique uh, career path. And so for this book, I was able to interview both of them at the same time. And it was like these two guys who hadn't seen each other in, say, six decades, it was like they hadn't seen each other in a week. Wow. And he says, they I just, just they, you know, went right back into their, their, their little routine. Yeah. And, and, and he, uh, Fife was, uh, uh, they, they did kind of weird demonic puppet shows in the neighborhood <laughs> that scared the kids. But yeah. Fife was his puppet master. Uh, he had, and, and, and Fife told me it was... Uh, an honor for him to be John Waters' puppet master back in the day, uh, and uh, uh, and they were best friends, and, and people find that hard to believe. And during the interview, he said, I loved it when it was your turn for carpool because I got picked up by a, 
a, a chauffeur in a limousine and Fife is going, oh, I hated that. And he goes, I know you hated it, but I thought it was glamorous. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, it was just so, it was so much fun. Uh, and then he says, he says, oh, I went and saw your house, your old house. It's still beautiful. And I went back to my house and, the, and, and in the, the yard was a uh, Santa, it was during Christmas, a uh, Santa with uh, being drawn by pink flamingos. And I thought, he says, I took that as a very high compliment. Uh, and then he went on and the, he saw the little kid. He says, come over here. And the kid had recognized it was John Waters. He goes, you don't know some of the blank that I thought up in that room, your, <laughs> your bedroom when I was a kid. Right. You know, it kind of scared the kid. He ran away. But uh, <laughs> he's still a kind of a crazy guy. And also, um, another interesting side note that's part of the, the narrative will be uh, how, why uh, Bill Clinton uh, pardoned, pardoned him. him. And it goes back to the fact that uh, Bill Clinton and Fife Simonton share a best friend. His name is Tommy Kaplan. He's, an, he's a, a very fine author, a novelist from Baltimore. Uh, he was Fife's best friend at Gilman, where he went to prep school. And uh, okay, and uh, and he was uh, became Bill Clinton's best friend. Long story short, uh, they're uh, freshmen. Uh, they're in Hyannisport. They're drinking too much. They're 19 years old, partying. Bill gets uh, gets caught in a riptide. Fife sails out there picks him up 400 yards, and as Fife said, he was going to Portugal. Bill was going to Portugal. He saved Bill Clinton's he life. He saved his life. And thus, that's the big surprise when we woke up on uh, January 20th, 19, uh, 2001, and Fife Symington was pardoned. Uh, and so his case, which was then uh, in the, the Ninth Circuit, it disappears. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was getting ready to go to prison. He mm -hmm. thought he was going to have to go. Mm -hmm. So what an amazing story. Uh, it and is an amazing people, story. And people don't know that they're friendly. They're not best friends, but mm -hmm. he and the Clintons are, uh, are friendly. And that's political life. Political mm -hmm. life, yeah. yes. <laughs> friends today and not friends tomorrow. <laughs> there and you friends go. the next day. When will this book be out? Do you think? Oh, I think maybe it could be 24 months. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm moving pretty quickly with the narrative. And okay. You need editors. And, and working every day and pretty much, <laughs> keeping yeah. busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's fun. Well, Dr. August, it's been just a pleasure to have you on the show, and we can do another show sometime because there's sure a lot more to talk about. <laughs> I hope so. I appreciate your knowledge, and thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation to thank be on the Thank you for show. being here today. Thank you. And that's Inside Cottonwood. That's the way it is in Cottonwood. <laughs>